Good evening, everyone. Hello and very a very, very warm welcome to our first live event within the AI Basic for Schools MOOC. Uh, I'm very happy to be here with you tonight and introduce you to what we call live practice. So it is kind of a live event that requires and engagement of the audience. So we would love to engage you as much as possible. And that's why we have prepared a lot of uh, short activities for you to try out, a lot of different tasks that you will be able to do while we are talking about uh, the basic concepts of AI. So that's why we call, we call it live practice. And uh, let me first uh, introduce uh, us, who we are. So there are three moderators here. Uh, my name is Ariana Blažić. I will be here with you uh, in uh, this call. And uh, Eugenia and Tommaso uh, have joined me, but they will uh, communicate with you uh, on Facebook. And as far as I can see, we have uh, a lot of people there from all over Europe. Uh, and uh, so we are very, very happy to have you here with us tonight. Let me now introduce our speakers. I'm very, very happy to have here our uh, expert teachers, Georgia Laskaris from Greece and Adil Tugyan from Turkey. And uh, I will now invite them to introduce themselves uh, Georgia, are you back? I am back. Yeah, I have, I, I have no Wi-Fi. I don't know why. So I'm on mobile uh, on mobile data. I hope that uh, I will be okay, at least for one hour. <laughs> Thank you so much. We were worried, but uh, yes, uh, it's uh, the most important is that you are here with with us. So please um, take a few moments to introduce yourself. Okay, hello everyone. I'm Julia Lascaris. I am a computer science teacher uh, in Greece. Um, the last 15 years I am working on uh, elementary and secondary schools in, uh, in Greece. But I have a background as a software engineer. For many years I was used to work on the private sector as a computer engineer. Uh, I love technology, I love my students, I love doing uh, new things every, every year, year by year, and I'm very excited to be in this live event, uh, a little stressed, of course, but very excited. Thank you, Arjana, for this opportunity. Thank you, Georgia, for joining us. We are delighted to have you here. Uh, so that you can share your expertise with uh, uh, teachers from uh, all over Europe. Uh, and uh, I'm very happy to introduce Adil. Adil, please take a few moments to introduce yourself. Oh, yes, hi, um, uh, dear all, and hi, uh, dear Ariana. I'm Adil Tuyan, I'm from Turkey. I'm uh, originally a language teacher. English is a second language teacher. But apart from that, I'm involving a lot of things. Um, I'm working for the National uh, Ministry of National Education as a content developer and, uh, and trainer, teacher trainer. And also I'm into a lot of projects from future classroom lab to e-teaming from the, the climate change pack to uh, code week. <laughs> I have very, very uh, in a large scale of expertise in everything, but recently I've been even I have a 13 MOOC for Ministry of National Education related to technology. And I'm very interested in the, 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 the use of technology in education. So um, I'm trying to improve myself day by day and trying to discover new areas that I can learn first and then inspire other teachers uh, to, to inspire them to develop their uh, professional development. And recently I've been working on uh, uh, disinformation and uh, social media literacy. I'll be, I'll be having a very 
big event soon in Turkey for the Ministry of National Education. And I'm, I'm really happy to be here. And like Giorgio, I'm a bit uh, excited this evening. I don't know why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, th thank you. The first thank time I'm live on Facebook. It's the first yeah. time. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I think me too, me too. <laughs> yes, and it's exciting. It's re it really is. Uh, as far I, as I can see, we have more than 200 people watching us on Facebook. So I'm really glad that uh, we are here to share uh, what we know about AI uh, with our colleagues. And um, so uh, I would also like to say that this is not going to be uh, just an ordinary webinar, but more like a conversation uh, uh, between us here. And also uh, we have some questions from uh, our participants uh, that are shared on the question boards. So uh, it, it's going to be a conversation, not a presentation, although we have some slides. But first, uh, let, me, let me welcome you to the MOOC as well. Uh, we have uh, more than 2,200 participants at the MOOC, so um, it's great to have you there. Uh, this is the uh, word cloud uh, that you helped us create, and it's amazing to see how positive uh, uh, all of you are about AI and all the good that AI can do for us as teachers and uh, also for our students. Uh, so a very warm welcome to the MOOC uh, that started on Monday, and uh, uh, the last day is on April the 7th and it consists of three modules. So we have just opened the first one with really basic concepts of uh, AI. Um, we have teachers of all subjects in this MOOC and so we think that it is important that uh, we all understand all these terms, expressions, words, vocabulary, so to say that is used with uh, uh, AI so that we can uh, then uh, be more ready to jump into the second and the third module, which will be more about education. So the focus is education, tools, uh, concrete examples, um, ideas, how you can bring AI to your uh, students. Uh, so uh, let's start with um, the first question that uh, many of us uh, uh, have asked uh, lately, because uh, I'm sure you have seen this uh, uh, timeline of the history of AI, and you have seen that uh, AI has been around for many, many decades now, but uh, now it has suddenly become a hot topic. Georgia, why? Why is it such a hot topic now? What would you say? Uh -huh. I don't really know, but I think uh, that because now we have this technology that really works. It really works. And we are surrounded by so many AI-driven applications that are shaping and transforming all the things you used to do. Uh, I think also that those AI applications have proved uh, business value. And this is important, I think, because all the tech giants like uh, Google, uh, Amazon, uh, Facebook, Microsoft are all investing heavily in AI and they're creating new opportunities and new fields of research. Today, AI applications involve ev everyone. It's not only, uh, they are not only used by uh, big companies or governments or industries, they are also used by common people in their everyday life. Uh, everyone who uses the internet or has a smartphone is interacting with some uh, AI application. So now AI is growing rapidly, both as a case study and also as an economy. And this um, has, and this is beginning really to change radically the way we are living and interacting with all those smart devices. Everyone is concerned, the citizens, the employees, the governments, 
the startup companies, the teachers, the students, the universities, and when the whole community is involved, and when maybe, maybe, maybe we are facing the biggest transformation of human history, I think all of those make AI now a super hot topic. Because it's very, it's a very uh, disturbing technology, I think. And uh, everyone, everyone wants to know the future after all. This is my point of view. I don't know if you agree, Idil or Arjana, but uh, I think uh, there is a lot, of course, of course, AI has a lot of imagination on, uh, on our minds, okay? We are, um, especially me who is uh, a fan of science fiction, uh, I always imagine, imagine AI as something very, very uh, uh, amazing. There is a Greek word, Zeus. It means that you are admiring something, but in the same time you are, you, you, you feel some, um, uh, you feel frightened. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to explain. Yeah. And uh, I think maybe may, some people um, feel the same about AI. Yeah, in awe, in awe of AI, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I absolutely agree. I'm. Uh, I also think that uh, it has uh, uh, a lot of potential, uh, especially in education. Uh, but also, of course, at the same time, uh, we must be aware of uh, the challenges and risks that it brings. But uh, it's really something that uh, uh, is uh, could change our lives to to a really. A uh, great extent and uh, has already done so. Adil, would you agree? Oh yes, I agree. But I, Anna, and I also would like to add something else, some some other points as well. You know, where the internet is evolving, and that's make everything for us very easier. And we have loads of information that we can now have to achieve to learn much more. And uh, through the history, people just. Um, and still now, people really would like to have some companions with them that could do everything for them uh, while they were just sitting at the ease of their houses. I think that is the ease of life just a bit urged teachers, uh, both teachers and, and the general public to have artificial intelligence with them because they, they do everything on the internet. And these internet companies need some some uh, mechanisms and use, uh, they need some system that could just put everything in, in order to that. That's why uh, artificial intelligence is really important. And in education, uh, of course, teachers are always effective uh, while teaching, but when, when it comes to assessment, we sometimes fall behind, uh, especially just to get in, get in the statistics about students learning. And it will also help teachers to make things easier, just to to make herself evolve in her in her job as well. So um, I think uh, it has many many uh, useful points. Yeah, thank you, Adil. Let's go on with uh, the, another question. So, what in fact is AI? Oh yes, <laughs> that, that's that's <laughs> a very controversial question, really. So. Um, as, as you mentioned just before your before this question, you said uh, we have artificial intelligence two years in the past, and it started in the ancient Greek and then came back, came a bit closer to Egyptians. And then while I was just working on the artificial intelligence, I just come across something very interesting. <laughs> yeah, I would, it would the, the year is 1812, and I'm sure. Everybody knows Green Brothers, the, the, the creators of Snow White, the fairy tale. So you might really ask, what is that related? What is it related with the Green uh, uh, Snow White uh, artificial intelligence? What could it be, Ariana? <laughs> can you give me, can you guess something? And, and Giorgio? Snow I have no White idea. Snow White and uh, artificial intelligence. Snow White. 
Snow White and Artificial Intelligence. Just remember um, that there was a vicious stepmother of Snow White. Um, and she was looking at something. The selfie with the mirror? Yes, actually the mirror. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, you know, when I was just checking, what could be the best example yes. of artificial <laughs> intelligence? Then I remember the Green Brothers, the, the vicious spouse, uh, stepmother was looking at the mirror and saying, mirror, mirror on the wall, tell me who is the fairies uh, of the world. So the, the mirror just scans all the world, all the ladies, and then said, my lady, you are the fairies. So that was the first maybe uh, example of artificial intelligence I thought really, because everything just coming from imagination, as long as we have our imagination, then we will, we will prevail and we will just evolve through centuries. And then we, uh, in 1950s, we had uh, John McCartney who wrote the first coding language. And then we came to 19, almost the same year, Alan Turing just proved that machine can um, think like humans. And then now, everybody in our pockets, in our houses, around, we all have artificial intelligence around. And what is that? So artificial intelligence enables computers and machines to mimic perception, learning, problem solving, and decision-making capabilities of uh, a human mind. And, but if you just think of that, uh, uh, description in uh, computer science, it, it can be just said that the term artificial intelligence referred to a human-like intelligence exhibited by a computer. So if a computer or any kind of devices can show a little bit uh, human-like intelligence, we can call these devices as artificial intelligence. And as we know, behind artificial intelligence, there is without coding, yeah, artificial intelligence wouldn't be possible. And artificial intelligence is the general term, uh, term to, to all, uh, like uh, as you see in, in this uh, diagram, artificial in intelligence is the universe of the computing technology. So it just, it just uh, includes every, uh, every kind of uh, thinking closer to, or intelligence closer to human, human intelligence. And um, we have uh, machine learning. Machine learning is the sub subset of the artificial intelligence. It can just, uh, uh, it can just learn itself, and, but requires human uh, involvement. So th there must be somebody always take care of it. And maybe in, in this, in, in, in intervals, it should have just upgrade it. And then we have deep learning and uh, deep learning is the subset of the uh, machine learning here. Uh, this is the most developed uh, version of the artificial intelligence that we don't have them yet, actually don't have them yet. And they teach themselves and most of the time, they don't need uh, human, human intervention. They just decide everything for themselves. Uh, in, the, in, the, the, in the coming minutes, I'll be giving more information about this, this thing. So uh, in short, artificial intelligence is uh, any kind of machine, computer, or device that can show us uh, even a little bit human uh, human-like intelligence. Uh, so uh, do you agree with that? <laughs> yeah, but uh, yeah, uh, I like this, the code that learns, the code that can learn, improve. So that's how it is similar to uh, human intelligence. Well, it's it's uh, mostly, the learning happens through neural networks actually. Yeah. So the neural networks are, it works like our, our brain. Yeah. And we will be talking about it in a moment. But before that, we've had a lot of questions about virtual uh, assistant and chatbots. And it's, it's a huge pleasure to introduce Ellie, uh, our uh, new chatbot on the EU Code Week uh, website. 
So you can uh, give it a try. And uh, Georgia, you also want to introduce Europeana, right? Yes. Yes, it's a chatbot about the Europeana uh, website and you can interact with it and try to find some information. So uh, I don't know, uh, do you want me to put it on the on the chat or? Uh, yes, or Tommaso, Tommaso and okay. Eugenia okay, will do okay, it, okay, yes. Okay, okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, yes, but the chatbots uh, are an interaction, a simple interaction, more or less, between the humans and uh, the machines. And there are programs, of course, and uh, they are using uh, machine learning and natural language processing to respond to user questions, simulating more or less a human conversation. Uh, they can use, the users can use uh, data they can type uh, questions or uh, use audio to communicate and interact with them. Um, there are def different kinds of uh, chatbots. Some of them are complex, some of them are simpler. They mainly, they are, um, they are made for using us, find information. For example, we can find uh, places, restaurants, museums, uh, hotels, and directions, how to, to go there. Uh, they can help us book tickets to events and shows, not now with COVID, of course. Uh, display, yeah, <laughs> once upon a time. Uh, display real-time weather conditions and recommendations. Uh, receive uh, general uh, customer um, uh, service help. Uh, we can also in, um, in a certain way, receive medical advice, for example, on COVID-19 symptoms. Um, they can use also, they can be used also in universities, in campus universities to guide and help uh, and assist students. Um, they are intelligent enough to understand what the, the sense of the context of the conversation but they, they can't find answers on their own. They are very um, stick to what they are meant to do. There, yeah. we, we, have also, um, uh, we have also the virtual assistants, we, which is a kind of chatbot, but um, they can crawl uh, through uh, existing resources and offer assistance to a wide uh, request, range of requests. Uh, we know Alexa, we know maybe uh, some of us have already used Siri or Google Assistant or Microsoft Cortana. And uh, they, they are acting like a personal assistant, which is very cool and help us to our day-to-day -day activities, such as managing our emails, our meetings, uh, proposing movies, music, uh, etc. But they are still machines. And uh, they, are, um, uh, they can't replace really a trained human assistant, I think. Yeah, I agree with you, Georgia. It's... Uh, uh... It's what they offer is some kind of basic service and actually mm -hmm. what they can do is to replace, to do some routine tasks instead of, yeah. uh, instead of us. Yes, but uh, I use Siri uh, quite often and uh, uh, we also invite uh, everyone uh, on Facebook uh, and here uh, who, if you want to give a uh, Ellie and uh, Europeana a try, uh, and then uh, tell us in the comment uh, 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 what it felt like. Was uh, Ellie, uh, did Ellie know all the answers? Uh, and what about Europeana? And you can also, of course, uh, do it with your students uh, in class and see how limited mm -hmm. or not they are. Okay, mm -hmm. let's go on with uh, deep learning. Uh, we have here mm -hmm. another short activity uh auto draw uh i use it quite quite often for creating icons so what you have to do is just uh, start a drawing and uh, the uh, auto draw will offer you 
uh, an icon to choose from. Uh, Georgia, have you tried it? Oh, many times. I love it because I'm an awful uh, uh, painter. I can't draw anything. My students often laugh at me when I am trying to draw something. Uh, and the tools like uh, auto draw, it's uh, are amazing for me. They are made for me, actually. So maybe uh, it would be a, a good idea now to engage our audience and mm -hmm. ask them to visit this uh, website, uh, start drawing something, choose uh, what uh, the system recommends and then download it and share it in Facebook comments. So uh, while we are talking about deep learning, what do you think, uh, Georgia? Deep learning, as uh, Adil said, deep, deep learning is a subfield of machine learning. Uh, machine learning uh, is actually what we have closer to AI today. Uh, real AI is still decayed away. Uh, but machine learning is here. The main um, aim of machine learning and deep learning uh, is to develop machines to be independent learners, like humans, um, and to be able to solve problems and interpret data without human interference. As Adil said, they can learn by themselves. Um, so uh, very simply, machine learning and deep learning is how machine learn from data and make predictions about data without being explicitly programmed to do this. Um, Adil said it before, that deep learning represents a huge step forward for machine learning. It is uh, inspired by the structure of the human brain and try to reproduce the way we learn. For example, the deep learning model does not try to understand the problem at once. Uh, it takes it piece by piece. Uh, it looks at the input, uh, find lower levels in each piece, features, and uses those uh, lower level features to gradually identify level, higher level of features, layer by layer, step by step. Um, we use it now to uh, analyze huge amounts of complex and structured data and uh, to, to be able to, proceed, to process all those data, it uses multi-layered neural artificial network to extract the pattern of the data and classify them on its own without human intervention, as we said. So uh, deep learning does not require pre-classified data to make interpretation. And, it's, uh, and it allows us to have the, those amazing AI applications nowadays. Uh, that I think as deep also, the, the, word, the word deep is that refers to the numbers of layers between the input and the, and the output of a neural network. Um, there are many, of course, today um, applications. We have uh, virtual assistant ch chatbot, autonomous vehicles, uh, uh, facial recognition, shopping and entertainment, all those are um, are very effective and they are um, based on deep learning technology. Thank you. Thank you, Georgia. Amazing technology. Yeah. It's really great what uh, uh, we are able to do uh, already. Okay, and uh, now, uh, we uh, want to see what neur neural networks are. Adil, you have a very nice activity for our uh, audience. Uh, can you explain it, please? Uh, oh, yeah. Yes, or maybe it would okay. be a good, okay. yes. I'm so sorry. Uh, I'm just saying I'm also um, uh, monitoring Facebook. Uh, they oh, still haven't yeah. posted any uh, auto draw icons. Uh, so maybe it would be a good idea that you explain uh, the neural networks okay. now, and then okay. we will uh, explain the, uh, what at they the need end. to do with the poem. Okay, at the end then we can just, oh, I have a question for both of you. Uh, what if you went shopping 
And that day you're wearing something black and you want to buy a t-shirt or a dress for yourself. And you ask some recommendations from the shop assistant uh, about a t-shirt, the color or the style of the t-shirt or the dress. What do you think would he suggest you to buy? Uh, the more expensive a... one? No. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it would <My> be, <laughs> <laughs> I would say it would be of the same color. And, and Giorgio? Um, maybe a color that fits my uh, skin tones. Oh, wonderful. So um, they both are actually correct, but uh, Ariana, why did you say maybe the same color that you're uh, wearing? Uh, because color? I thought that uh, 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 the shop assistant would see what I'm wearing and he would assume that that's what I like. So Wonderful. he would probably offer the same thing. He Wonderful. would, yeah. That, that's actually what uh, artificial intelligence offers us really. So well, first, um, he, he just, um, it, it's just something like our brain literally. We just see something and then the, in our brain, we just try to uh, make some assumptions, calculations and similarities and then we just come to uh, an, an outcome, really. That's, uh, that's like our thinking. And a neural, uh, a neural network is the network of the algorithm, uh, algorithmic calcul calculations that is designed to act like a human brain. So um, uh, artificial intelligence brain is uh, shortly called neural network. So we, in neural network, there are two kinds of neural networks here. Uh, I, I will just say that it was the same um, with all the shopping um, shopping web pages. You know, when when you buy something, and then the, the artificial intelligence, like in Amazon, it just checks everything. But even in all uh, automatic respondents, there is artificial intelligence now. So it. Just uh, you want to buy some takeaway food from an online web, web, web page, you take a hamburger and then a Coke, then the computer thinks, oh yeah, you might need some French mm -hmm. fries as well. So it makes you buy things. That, that, that is, that's the way how uh, an artificial intelligence thinks. So uh, a neural network, that's the artificial intelligence brain, has three parts, as you can see in the uh, in the diagram here, the shape. And the, the, the first layer, these are all called layers. Yeah, there are three layers here. In, so the first one is the uh, input layer where you uh, introduce data to uh, the neurons. Uh, the input layer is the uh, place where data enters the network. So, but the data just, um, goes into the network through very uh, different uh, sizes and shapes like categorized, labeled, and uh, tagged. So they classified uh, data goes through the input. And then this is where the magic happens, the, the hidden, hidden net, the layer. The hidden layer uh, is the place like, like we think uh, about something uh, from our brain, from our head. So everything happens here. The algorithms just, uh, the algorithm just uh, process the data taken from the input and it puts some uh, rules and threshold and biases. It just uh, defines the rules. And then at the end, at the output layer, we just get the, get the conclusion or a decision emergence here. And uh, you can see here, uh, that's the basic neural network. So the basic neural network, network uh, networks are also called uh, artificial narrow intelligence. So here uh, you have only the label data uh, with artificial intelligence. And this kind of neural networks are designed just for one specific task. Uh, 
it's like actually it's like Siri or uh, uh, it is like Google Translate. So they just design to carry out one specific uh, task. But here in the deep one, oh, uh, that, is, that is really more sophisticated. So here the data introduced or entered to the, to the neural, neural network is unlabeled mostly. Unlabeled, when it is unlabeled or unsupervised uh, data, it is called that there is no human intervention with the data. And also there is no any classification of the, uh, of the information or just a little classification or labeled data is here. And as you see, there are a lot of layers here. The more uh, complex is the network, that means it has more layers. And uh, with this kind of uh, the neural network, we can just uh, uh, do really, really very uh, sophisticated tasks. And that is the, this kind of neural work that most of the, uh, most of the prominent people who are into artificial intelligence are afraid of because they say if we have this technology and if we have uh, deep learning neural networks, then the human could be at risk. This, this is the place where that negative thoughts are coming out. And even Stephen Hawking, the, the uh, famous astrophysicist always just feared that. They said, if, if they can't uh, control in the future, if they can't control uh, artificial intelligence, then they will just end the people, the, the humanity from this earth. To, for, to give in an example for this kind of neural network, we can just, um, it can be named artificial general intelligence. And have you, Ariane and Giorgio, have you watched a, a Space Oddity 2001? Yes, we have. I, I and, have, Georgia. And do you remember the, the Hell, Hell. Hell yes. 9000? Yes, that, that's kind of, that is the kind of deep yeah. learning yeah. Uh, artificial intelligence. Yes, we will be talking about these three types in, in a moment. Um, yeah. And but uh, I'm glad you mentioned it because it is important to become aware of what is happening there, where the magic is happening, yeah. and to be critically, cri to critically uh, approach it, because this is the only way how we can uh, uh, limit the harm that. Uh, such things can cause. But uh, uh, Adil and George, I can tell you that there are so many wonderful icons uh, coming up on Facebook. Yeah. There, are, there, 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 are, uh, there is a lot of uh, sun, uh, octopus, uh, uh, bunnies, uh, so. Vacations, <laughs> vacations. Yes, <laughs> uh, very good. So now we are ready for this uh, poem experiment. Uh, of yes. which, yes, Adil, please uh, introduce I mean, it. The uh, point portraits, you just go into the, yeah, please go into the link and then you will be seeing um, a, a place where you can just upload, uh, you, you just write a word and then you upload your photo and at the end you will have a wonderful portrait picture uh, of you uh, with, the, with, the, with the poem. Yeah, with the word you choose and also the poem will be on your face in a very nice uh, located uh, style and I'm sure you will like it a lot and you can do it at, at school with many uh, kind of different activities with this uh, you can use this with many activities yeah and like, also Adil if uh, they don't want to take a photo uh, they don't have to you can just they, keep they can upload one from the one. computers as well yes so they can choose the ones they already have but mm -hmm. uh, it's their computer and they, there will be no harm yeah okay <laughs> yeah. but who if you want of course please feel free to share it on facebook give it a try i tried it with the word sunshine it was really really nice yes, the face is a bit blurred so there is no yeah. any problem yes yeah and so, uh, please 
Yes, give it a try uh, while we go on with our next question, uh, which is natural language processing. And then we will also introduce this very, very simple tool uh, after you tell us what natural language processing is, Adil. Yeah, of course. But uh, before that, I would like to say something else too about that uh, neural networks. You know, uh, Elon Musk is just carrying out a very secret uh, experiment for now. Have you ever heard about it? Yes, that? yes, I've heard. Yes, yeah. I know that. I know yeah, that. He's just trying to create a system that he could Imp just uh, uh, yeah, destroy artificial intelligence threats in the future. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, um, uh, but uh, will they be a threat or not? Then we will see, but maybe we, we may not be able to see it because uh, in 50 years time, we will not be able to see it. Uh, general artificial yeah. intelligence, as the as the, the scientists say. Yes. So no, now uh, the natural language processing is basically uh, the computer understands uh, the text you introduce to it. Actually, understand the human language. So uh, um, it is uh, in short form. It's called. NLP and helps machine process and understand human language in any given context uh, so that they automatically carry out repetitive tasks. Uh, this is also more related to, mostly related to machine learning again. And uh, because they are introduced to some uh, regulations and some standards and then the, the computer uh, text the task, text, and then scans it, and then analyze it in in um, uh, in different uh, categories, like the like the like the category that you can see on the on the screen, and then it, at the end it just gives it as translation, machine translation, and summarization, ticket classification, uh, and things like that. So. Uh, the, the parts of this uh, uh, natural language processing is first you just introduce here uh, input sentence, you just introduce the computer a, 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 pass, a text or a sentence. And then um, after introduction, then the morphological processing starts here, the words are expressed uh, words and expresses are, uh, expressions are separated from another and uh, it can analyze, identify the descriptions and the structure of the words and divide your task, text into uh, paragraphs and then into sentences and also extract the punctuation here in the uh, morphological uh, process. And then it comes to syntax analysis here words and grammatical structures are processed. So uh, the order of the words and the grammatical structure of the, of the sentence and how the words in a sentence related to each other and how they uh, bring out meaning in the, in the semantics way. And that's the analyzer of the meaning, but in, in that kind of uh, uh, neural language processing, only literal meanings are uh, important. So like when you write something on Google Translate in, in, um, in an accent or in a very rare used uh, way, you cannot get the result. That's why uh, only literal meanings of the words and phrases are just uh, uh, added as input. And at the last, last part, oh, uh, there's pragmatic analysis here. The real conversation between uh, the, uh, or the, the outcome comes out. And here, the uh, communication and social content of the interpretation, you can see. And abstracting and deriving meaning from the useful language situations here, dialogues here. And also uh, applying rules to characterize uh, uh, cooperative land uh, uh, dialogues with the, with the machine. Like you're talking to um, a, 
like talking to a chat box, the chat chat bot, or using a text to speech uh, machine. Or and there is there was a very nice tool about that. It's Hello Slide. Um, you were just uploading your presentation on it, and it would give you all the uh, all the text uh, and also uh, uses speech. Uh, okay. And also, Immersive Reader was a very nice ex uh, example for it, Microsoft Immersive Reader. Yes, that's mm. what we will introduce in our third module. Uh, <laughs> thanks, Atil. Uh, here is a very, very uh, nice tool. Uh, it's uh, at the very early stages of uh, its development uh, to uh, analyze the sentiment of the text. And uh, I think it's a good tool uh, to try out to see what AI could do. Uh, to read the emotions uh, of our students and our emotions and to detect how we are feeling, to help us detect how our students are feeling. So uh, this, as I said, is only the beginning and we will see uh, how it evolves in the future. But please give it a try, copy a text uh, and uh, see uh, what type of text this is. But let's go on with uh, just a, uh, just uh, one sentence, Adil, please. Will AI replace teachers in the future? What do you think? Oh, I think no. <laughs> <Yes>. Georgia, <laughs> yes. what do you think? <laughs> no, yes. no, I absolutely <laughs> agree with you. <laughs> no, no, no. no. <laughs> yeah, I, was, I was just uh, at the beginning before I, uh, I started to work on artificial intelligence, I thought really, with that information on artificial intelligence, soon we will be losing our job. But then after yeah. my research and talking to some experts about this, uh, I, some expert uh, the, on this uh, specific area, then I was convinced that, convinced that the teachers will be teachers uh, forever because um, the, the best way you use artificial intelligence uh, in the classroom, it just to share the share the workload. So the teacher would be just uh, responsible for uh, arranging the classroom or just um, uh, interaction and empathy and collaborative work and what else? Just motivating students uh, to work more or to study in a better way, but uh, an artificial intelligence will do the rest. It will just uh, check the exams and track the students' uh, achievements through uh, some uh, uh, data. And also uh, we'll propose some new studying uh, styles to the, to the uh, students, but the teacher's role uh, will be will be the same. Yeah. I just want and to give, give an example, if 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 I may, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we don't have so much time, uh, but okay. yes. All right, and yeah. uh, you know we, we are in the, in the time of the COVID. Now most of the students are into the technology, but they don't work. There is a yeah. saying: you can just lead a horse to the water, but you cannot make it drink. At that point, teachers jump in and take the responsibility from, from the uh, artificial intelligence. <laughs> yeah, and uh, yeah, uh, but I think what you have just said is what we have been dreaming all the time. So we want uh, someone else to do all these boring tasks, uh, grading papers, things like that, so that we can dedicate our time to our students. And if AI, uh, can do that, then yes, I want AI in my classroom. <laughs> the teacher's efficiency will work, it will yeah. be like yes, yes. Yeah. So the three types of AI, we've said, uh, we've mentioned so many things that AI can do, but what are the things AI cannot do? Georgia. Uh, yes, we have uh, three types of AI, narrow AI that can perform specific types, that's what we have now, general AI that act like humans, maybe in some decades with deep uh, learning, and super AI that are above humans. 
Um, regarding uh, super AI, it is it only exists in science fiction scenarios and maybe in the media headlines. Maybe it will be a good thing to introduce uh, computer literacy in all the school's curriculum uh, to real to help bridge the gap between the imagination and the reality because people. Um, always imagine a super AI that will uh, terminate uh, hum uh, humanity. So we really need to, um, to, to, teach, to teach students yes, about this technology and how to use this technology. Um, I think that all today's AI applications are more focused on uh, building practical and useful solutions for real uh, for real world problems and may, um, many of them are performing far better than human we are not in this period uh, looking at the super AI we are looking for solutions um, what they can do by its nature uh, AI is limited to algorithms so, Computers can do uh, things uh, only that can be um, computable. Things like, for example, creativity, imagination, uh, consciousness, curiosity, empathy, intuitions, humor, dignity, uh, feeling care, maybe also the capacity to dream cannot be computerized. So AI can do, for example, they, can, they cannot solve everything. It's not the solution for everything. Uh, they cannot do originally creative writing. Though with the GT3, they can write fluently um, texts. And you can't easily tell if this text is made by a human or by a machine. But still, it's based on existing uh, text on uh, learning data. Uh, they cannot bring inventions, they cannot uh, create from scratch like humans, but they can propose some other inventions. Uh, they cannot care, they can recognize emotions, but they are not feel emotion. Uh, they cannot communicate with understanding. Chatbots can propose solutions, but they don't really understand the feeling of uh, uh, the human. Um, so I think uh, there are some, um, some skills that are especially humans and maybe education will have, we have to focus now on those skills. We must be more human than uh, ever now that we have so uh, smart machines working and living with us. Thank, thanks, Georgia. Yes, it's very important that we understand uh, that they are not the AR tools uh, that are out there are not perfect at all. Mm -hmm. and, and, they are we, tools. and they are just tools. tools. They are not in. So I, I just recently I read a very nice article entitled, uh, yes, artificial intelligence, but where is intelligence? Yeah. So, uh, yes, what is we, intelligence? yes, where is it? So we have to be careful. And I've just read a comment on Facebook uh, about the patch mode, mode that it is biased and it doesn't understand very well. Uh, so yes, this is exactly what we need to understand that these things will happen. And we need to show our students that AI is far from perfect. Uh, so uh, this, this is what we hope to achieve uh, in this MOOC, that we are aware of its potentials, but also of its potential harm. So I hope that we will manage to, uh, to do it. And um, now a question that you've asked so many times in the question board is how can AI support teaching and learning? And uh, so in the first module, we just introduced the concept of AI to understand what neural networks are, deep learning, machine learning, and so on. But in the second module, we will focus on AI in education. This is our topic and also in the third module. 
so assessment how uh, what can be done today what are we hoping ai to do for us in the future uh, how it can give in-depth feedback uh, not only summative scoring but um, uh, uh, timely feedback intelligent tutoring systems have been around for many years now but are they really so good and what does it mean for our students if they have learning companions what about their uh, privacy what about the data they they uh, these system these systems uh, take from from all of us personalized and uh, learning just like the recommender systems we've introduced in this module so for learning what would that mean that uh, th the system builds a part for uh, every single student that uh, uh, that is best for uh, for this student Access accessibility and uh, tools that you already use you have mentioned some of them like immersive reader seeing ai can help us a lot with uh, 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 to to make uh, uh, students to make our uh, um, teaching and learning uh, inclusive, and also if it, it could detect uh, uh, emotions of our students so that we can see if they struggle with something, if they uh, are very interested or bored bored by something. So it's uh, but there are also some other imp other implications that we need to take into consideration so in the next module there will be there will be a lot of tools concrete examples for different subjects that you can uh, uh, use with your students but also potential harms and uh, georgia there was also a question about the comparison between teaching coding and teaching ai can you please briefly tell us uh, about it we only have uh, several minutes left now oh it's okay um last year we implemented a chatbot who will um, um to um, to recognize bad words form good words so the task was if you are speaking with bad words to the robot or the chatbot it will um put on a sad face and it and if you are you are using uh, you use uh, good words it will put on a smiling face so it was related also with the head speech in the internet uh, we started by programming this uh, as we always do by scratch so more or less the approach is the same because you are talking about the input data what is the input data it's the words bad words or good words and what is the uh, result a smiling face or a sad face by using the traditional algorithms uh, the chatbot is asking uh, uh, talk to me and then the answer step by step is analyzed so if the answer is you are great or you are stupid you have a, a happy face or a sad face but uh, this way they had to write a lot a lot a lot of commands to uh, to be able to um, recreate the conversation uh, so what we did the next step they, they achieved to, de, to do the to do the, the coding and the next step where we were using we used a machine learning tool machine learning for kids so they put in the in two buckets uh, big amounts of good words and big amounts of bad expressions and then we reprogrammed the same things but using the training data of the machine learning so what uh, I, I don't know if you can go to the good words, bad words, buckets. Oh, sorry, A sorry, sorry. Of, no, no, that's okay. No, no, no. Uh, yes, for example, uh, here, they introduced a large amount of good, of good words and bad words. If they had to uh, write a script for each of them, it will take uh, them hours to do this. So they realize that using ML, they can do the same thing exactly, but in, an, in a different way. 
I don't know if I explained it uh, very well, but uh, that was uh, the idea. Uh, starting by, by a conventional coding uh, algorithm and turning it to a, um, a machine learning algorithm. Very good, uh, Georgia. And also uh, there will be uh, a learning uh, bit that uh, you've uh, created mm -hmm. about uh, how to create a COVID-19 chat chatbot in the second yes. module. So uh, a step-by-step -step procedure mm -hmm. for all of you who want to give it a try. Yes, I think it's, a, it's an amazing opportunity. Uh, now that brings me to the question board. Uh, uh, as you have seen, uh, there are a lot of questions and a lot of votes. Most of them um, refer to the tools uh, that can be used for teaching young students, uh, for teaching different subjects. So there will be plenty of this in the second and the third module. Uh, I would also like to say that uh, we shouldn't expect that AI will immediately solve all our education problems uh, as soon mm -hmm. as, uh, as we finish this MOOC, because uh, unfortunately it isn't like that. Um, so, but what we, as I said, want to achieve is that we raise awareness of what can be done, that we, it is important to introduce AI to our students. And that's what we are going to learn in the next modules to see how we can prepare them uh, to, um, to live with AI, to build AI, what skills they need. And I hope this will be um, useful for all of you so that you can, uh, you can give it a try in your classroom. Uh, and uh, uh, so uh, now I would also thank, like to thank you for the, all the screenshots that you posted about recommender systems. Uh, and yes, even though m most of you said that uh, the um, recommendations weren't personalized. In fact, there are not two identical uh, recommendations on this uh, Padlet here. And um, uh, it's Google is uh, obviously uh, not so personalized uh, as uh, some other tools like Facebook, uh, or Amazon or Netflix. I'm sure you would agree with me, but still um, it, uh, uh, it uh, as someone says, uh, uh, the most um, important factor for uh, these uh, recommendations was lo uh, your location. location. So yes, m uh, those of uh, us from Croatia had very similar results, but mm -hmm. uh, I didn't have uh, the results that some of you uh, who live in, uh, for example, Norway uh, received. Uh, but this is also something that we need to understand uh, that uh, there, uh, we get the results that are based on where we live uh, or what we have uh, searched for before. Okay, and if you have questions uh, now, uh, we might uh, dedicate some minutes to, to your questions. Uh, Tomas, I, I see that uh, there are some questions in the uh, fa on Facebook, but if you would like to uh, point our attention to certain questions, please do so. Thank you. Thank you, Ariana. Yes, uh, there are some questions, of course, from the very beginning, so uh, quite a lot of interest. I would suggest also the speakers to go on the chat later on, because I think some questions sparked some uh, conversation, so it would be, and uh, some are very specific, of course, they are asking for example, of AI activities that can be done, um, for instance, in a, in a foreign language class or in a biology class. So uh, if you want, if you have any brilliant idea that you want to share straight away, that could be uh, one to be addressed. There's quite a few other questions. Maybe another um, elements that was important that was raised on Facebook, how can we work on artificial intelligence ethics with our students? Oh, well, I think this is uh, one of the most important mm -hmm. uh, segments of artificial intelligence. And that's why we dedicated the whole uh, third module mm -hmm. to it. And uh, there will be a lot of uh, really good examples, uh, practical examples that you can uh, do with your students. 
uh, how to teach them about the data bias, uh, algorithmic bias, how to teach them uh, about uh, deep fakes, fabrications, how to uh, how to uh, uh, make sure that uh, their uh, data uh, is secure. So uh, these are very, very important uh, factors that we need to take into consideration. And that's why we dedicated the whole module to it. And uh, so if you, uh, if you can wait until the third module, that will be in uh, like what, uh, 10 days. Uh, I'm sure mm -hmm. you will be, uh, you will have a lot of uh, different ideas at your fingertips. Uh, personally, I like this module the most. Yes, me too. It's, yes, it's, it's really something uh, that there is a, a lot of uh, uh, ideas out there, lesson plans, and we will share all of this with you. Uh, I, uh, I teach languages and I've done some uh, uh, AI tools in my class. Uh, my students loved it and I will share it later in uh, Facebook. And also, uh, dear Ariana, they are asking for some activities for the young learners and they can find it in the, in the, in the MOOC as well. Yes, and also... Learners. Yes, and the learning bit with that Adil created that will also be uh, published next week uh, in the MOOC uh, that you will be able to use about how to introduce uh, neural networks to very, very young mm. learners. And can I recommend something to the teachers? Yes, sure. And uh, if they want to learn the impact of the uh, artificial intelligence in education, to, just for, for teachers, they can just read Benjamin Bloom's Two Sigma Effect article. That's really very inspiring. And as personally just related to personalized learning and how um, and what kind of effect you can get from uh, artificial intelligence when you just uh, implement it with your students in the, in the classroom. Two Sigma Effects uh, by Benjamin Bloom, please. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Adil. Uh, Tommaso, uh, are there any other urgent questions that we should uh, address now? Yes, so there is another question which is now about how to integrate it in math. But uh, as you mentioned before, I think um, we can get to that maybe in the, in the chat, if you like, uh, to continue maybe some conversations there or otherwise, as you mentioned uh, in the, overall um, online course, there, there's going to be examples. Um, there's just a, another couple of points that I wanted to read out loud uh, for everybody in, uh, in case we have some time to answer or, or not, uh, doesn't matter, but I think it's important. It was a comment from Robert saying that, uh, that so far AI is presented as being of benefit to humanity, uh, but of course with an Un unregulated growth of the eventual super AI, how could we, uh, could it be potentially harmful to humans? So of course you mentioned already that we have a very critical view on AI. I don't know if you want to add anything uh, about that, about the risks or uh, on the fact that uh, we'll tackle that during the course uh, in the next modules. Uh, I don't think that we have to fear of technology. We, I don't, we, but we can fear of human using the technology in uh, bad ways, I think. So the problem is not the technology. The problem is the, the human, the scientists, the governments, the, the, the rules, uh, all of the structure of uh, the, um, of our, maybe. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, that's true. Uh, and uh, critical, critical thinking, critical, critical thinking. yes, uh, developing digital literacy. Mm -hmm. yes. So these are the things that we can do to, to, to prevent this uh, uh, super AI from happening and destroying humanity. Uh, as far as I've read about it, uh, there are uh, the scientists don't really believe that this will happen. But then yeah. no one believed about COVID either. <laughs> but okay, no, no, no. So um, on a on a lighter note, I I think it is important that um, we uh, we we 
uh, teach our students and, and that also that we as teachers uh, learn about it because these are all new things. No one knows mm -hmm. about it so just, much. Just as a tool, maybe. As yeah. A tool. Mm -hmm. Very good. Thanks a lot. Then I would suggest uh, to all the speakers to go through the, the comments as well, maybe to explain a few comments uh, a bit more as the very nice metaphor and examples you gave Adil on the oh, yes. uh, Snow White uh, mirror. Very brilliant, oh, uh, uh, very powerful actually, as well. <laughs> Thank you, dear Tommaso. Actually, there wasn't an artificial intelligence there, but it was just a, a very nice resemblance. So uh, when the wishes uh, stepmother says, mirror, mirror on the wall, tell me who is the fairest on the, the, in the world, then the mirror scans all the fairest women in the country or in the world, and then, uh, where, and then the mirror can't find anybody and says, you are. And when, when the mirror finds Snow White and says that Snow White is the fairest, not you. So, uh, that, that is just a resemblance, but um, uh, imaginary, actually. <laughs> yeah. Thank they, you, Adil. Yeah, 19, 12, 18, 12 is very early for the artificial intelligence. <laughs> so uh, it was just a very nice resemblance. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's very powerful because we we, we, we call that uh, magic, and now we yeah, actually I, I, call I, I, talking yeah. about science. So it's a very <laughs> yes. good uh, connection. Yeah. Okay, I think we, we've taken um, most of the questions. Of course, many doubts are still, uh, are still there, which yeah. is uh, absolutely the, the point of all the exercise, I think, to, to um, make sure we ask the right questions. But of course, this conversation will continue. And Ariana, I'll give that back to you, but I take just the chance to thank so much all the speakers that... That's, uh, asking for the title of the author, Benjamin Bloom, like Bloom Taxonomy and the uh, Two Sigma Effect. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can post it in, in Facebook. Thank you, Christina. Yeah. Christina has written, thank you. Benjamin Bloom, Two Sigma Effect. Mm -hmm. Thank you, uh, thank you. <laughs> yeah, the other participants had found it in the meanwhile, so they, <laughs> they had, they had posted it in since. Yeah, Vishnu, hey, we, we had some uh, a larger time than we could talk about, but uh, I think we have given the, 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 the essence. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay, uh, so let's go on with uh, our new announcement. Uh, so as you know, we will have another webinar uh, in uh, uh, this uh, MOOC uh, on the 24th of March, also at seven uh, Brussels time. We, and we are uh, very, very pleased to introduce our guest speakers uh, in this event, uh, Teemu Ross from Finland. Uh, Professor Ross is the author uh, and one of the instructors of the Elements mm -hmm. of AI MOOC. Uh, and uh, uh, Marco Neves, uh, an expert from Portugal, uh, a teacher who will tell us also how he uses uh, AI in education. And uh, uh, you are very, very uh, welcome to join us for this webinar. I'm sure there, there will be a lot of uh, questions and uh, answered in this webinar. And uh, finally, let me uh, say thank you, but uh, maybe let's, uh, we can play some music. There is a, a very nice tool, uh, but uh, this is AI Duet, but it, it only works for two people. Uh, I mean, for one person one and person. AI, yes. But now we are going to do something which is not really AI, but it's fun. So let's uh, close this webinar with uh, playing some music together collaboratively. So uh, we, we have created four links because in one room you can play piano, drums and everything else with 10 people. We, uh, I'm really happy that there are more than 200 people right now. So not, it does, it means, however, that you won't be able to fit in all this room. So, but when you get there, just click new room, create a room, share the link to Facebook, and then everybody will join your room. So let's keep on, uh, uh, um, 
let's uh, end this webinar in a musical way. Uh, and then you can share the links in the in the chat box, the chat uh, in the in the chat, not in the chat box, but in the chat, <laughs> in the chat of uh, Facebook. Uh, you can save your music and then share it. So give it a try, uh, and let's end this with uh, some music. Uh, Adil and uh, Georgia, uh, your final words for this webinar. Oh, um, let's start from Georgia. <laughs> okay. Ah, thank you. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, okay. Uh, I think it was a uh, it was a great live event. I was very anxious, and of course, it was my little like, accident with uh, my connectivity. But uh, I uh, I learned from my dear because we are all learners in AI, okay? We, we may knew, 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 we, we may, excuse me, we may know some things right now, maybe after two weeks, one month or one year, we will have to reconsider all of the things we have said today. So uh, keep tuned. I can't say uh, anything else. And thank you, thank you, thank you all, really. And I agree with Giorgio. It was uh, my first experience just being broadcast on Facebook. And I like this idea so much. And um, I'd like to thank all the participants and all the people just uh, backing up uh, uh, this for this event just to uh, bring to us all. And Ariana, thank you so much for your um, moderation. It was great. I was, I'm so happy <laughs> and we learned really, as Georgia said, we, we learned a lot of things. This yes. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you both. Uh, I've learned so much from you, uh, not only today, but uh, uh, I always learn from you and I think it is important. And I think also that because we are learners, we like this and in, really yes. enjoy uh, such webinars, MOOCs and uh, and uh, so what can I say in the, at the end? Thank you so much. Uh, thank you for being here with us tonight. We hope you uh, enjoy the MOOC and see you on uh, Wednesday the 24th. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.